All right, so what we're going to do here is just a little bit of a recap. Um, you see I've got my sheds from this season on the table. Um, quite a few chalky ones I left in the woods um, or deadheads that uh, were chewed up left in the woods. So this isn't all the antler I came across, but it's definitely the good ones. And uh, just start out by saying it's the best shed season I ever had. Uh, I got pretty lucky this year for sure because I didn't spend, I don't think I spent as much time shed hunting as I have in previous years, but um, maybe I'm getting a little better at it or I uh, just got a little luckier. But um, because the acorns this past year were in spotty locations, they weren't everywhere. Um, really, the majority of these sheds that I found were in acorn producing areas where there are quite a few acorns where you could see the leaves upturned from a long ways away. You know, if you're going through the the woods and the places I would hone in on is you, you could see flat leaves, leaves laid down, matted down, you know, for ages. And then all of a sudden you'd see the disturbance and it's very easy to pick up on. And once you see the disturbance, all the leaves overturned where the deer had been, you know, pawing up, um, looking for, for acorns under those leaves, um, I would spend a lot of time in those areas. Sometimes that would be a big whole side of a ridge. Sometimes it would just be a little tiny pocket in a sea of otherwise flattened um, leaves. But that was that was literally the strategy I went with this year. That was it. I didn't. Um, I did go into bedding areas where I know deer bed. Didn't find any of them. Maybe one or two will come to mind as I'm walking through them. But I, I'm, most of these were in acorns. Um, so we'll kind of just go through um, the shed season. Real quick, and I'll tell stories about where I found each one, if I got history and that kind of thing. And then um, at the end, we'll talk about uh, what I've been doing. Right now, it's it's already May. Um, I'm way behind. Been working on hunt stock a lot, getting this studio ready. Um, up and going. By the way, this is Pat Burns' addition to the studio. He says uh, it's his fourth biggest deer. <laughs> I think it uh, scores 155. It's a beast. Um so nice having him in the studio here but uh all right let's go through the sheds and then we'll talk about what i'm doing right now preseason. um even though i i'm i think i'm way behind i'm not getting as much prep work in as i have in previous years because i'm busy but um still there's stuff that i've been doing and probably uh ahead of uh some guys out there who don't have anything done but um anyways let's get through uh the shed season so the first two sheds i found were right here this these are probably in january february and there were last year's last year's sheds uh and there were a set they were right in um a spot that i had walked by a bunch of times in previous years um it's got a little uh split down here and kind of a cool cool high rack so if that bucks around i think i might know the buck that this is um if it's the buck I think it is, he's got a really big body, like a horse. Um, and he had a high, weird seven-point rack this year. So it does kind of look like this this deer, except for, you know, every time was a little bit bigger. He had a lot more mass, and he had a uh, super heavy body. So it just goes to show you, I, I walked by this exact. It, it was on the corner, inside corner of uh, a stone wall corner. Um just on the inside of one about 10 or 15 yards off of it laid down and i know i've walked by it four or five times um last year shed hunting and uh then this year before i saw these and um you know they were under some leaves but you know they were kind of right on plain sight ready to see so there's number one and two on the year right there um and it was a set and you know those are in pretty good shape I, I do say that I, if they're old, I leave them in, but these these are in pretty good shape, and they're a, a deer that I can hunt that I think I might know, so I'm taking them out of the woods, but um, if they're really chewed up, I don't want to bring them out, but to each their own. So there's the first two. There might have been one before that that I don't have on the table here, so that could have been three. I, I, I didn't really keep track. I think it was between 25 and 30 fresh ones this year. Um all right, so then that it went. I was a. I went a quite a ways. Oh yeah, there's another uh, 
another set somewhere um, that is very small. But I found um, for after those two, Pat Burns and I went out to Western Mass and did a whole big loop. I think we did 13 miles that day. And um, I found three sheds, a, a small spike horn, um, and then two little ones uh, right in the same general area. So we covered 13 miles. It was pretty barren the whole time. And then finally got into some sign at the end of the day. And I found three sheds that day. Those were the first. Uh, the spike was a fresh one. The other set was, again, a year uh, year old. So I don't know, up to like five or something. Then the first real good one I found on the year was this one uh last year scotland and i after i tagged out scotland came down with his muzzle loader we went into a, a patch of big woods um it was a downpouring rainy day uh lots of wind so my goal with him that day we're just gonna walk 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 it's good still hunting conditions i know there's big bucks in this area so it was a big patch of woods um <clears throat> we took our time that morning and I think about an hour and a half into our still hunt in the morning, we jumped up a really big body deer, mature deer, um, with a big rack, a wide rack. But I remember thinking, I don't, I didn't see a lot of tine sticking up, but I know he had long main beams and he was wide. And come to find out, I believe this is, uh, this is him. And he, he, he's a really wide deer. And I know someone who's got him on camera and he's about 20 inches wide. So, um, pretty cool that, uh, jumped him with scotland um scotland couldn't get his rifle up it, it all happened really fast uh but jumped him out of his bed and then uh the next time i went in there was when i went shed hunting and covered a lot a lot a lot a lot of ground again going in and out of bedding areas uh checking on some knobs where i knew there'd be some acorns looking looking didn't find anything i was in the real thick uh blueberry bush stuff um and then finally i got up and onto a ridge that was a little more open but also had oaks and and acorns and um i almost stepped right on this one before i saw it but he was sticking out and i was really excited to get my first nice shed of the year so that was that was that one um i covered the top of that ridge back and forth probably put on three miles just walking back and forth and zigzagging that ridge trying to find the match to him um <clears throat> and about two hours later and I don't know, 1,100 yards away from that one, uh, I found this one. And, you know, it wasn't even close to where this one was. It was up and down a few ridges. Um, and I found this one. It ends up being his match. So pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that's the deer that uh, Scotland and I jumped up, you know, kind of running away from us broadside looked like that. And I remember it having long, long main beams and not a lot of tines sticking up. So big six-pointer, found a match. I was super pumped about that. So there's those two. And then this one that same day. So this was a three shed day. Um, I met up with my buddy uh, after I found those two, the one who has that on camera. And um, so I met up with him. We took our e-bikes into another piece of the that big forest um, that ne neither of us really had been in in a while. We both wanted to go scout it. Uh, so we went in there and... Did a whole big loop in there. I ended up jumping two mature bucks that had both shed. Um, once we got into the kind of the spot we were, we looked at on on X, it looked like it'd be super thick, pretty isolated, and uh, had some acorns, uh, acorn producing trees um, in that on X overlay. So we we dove down into that spot, split up, <clears throat> covered covered a lot of ground. Once I got right in between two, there were two knobs, two high points in a really low, swampy, very brushy, very thick area. Um, I was walking right on a deer trail that was going through it, which made it a little easier to walk. <clears throat> the only place you really could walk in there. And I uh, was walking along on a deer trail. just got over that, that first knob and was starting to go down the backside of it to the low spot. And the, the, other, the other knob's right on the other side. And that's when big deer jumped up. I could tell it was a really big body right away. Always carrying my binoculars with me so I can scope stuff out. He, he bounded a couple times, stopped, looked back at me, brought the binoculars up, and could see, you know, he was a buck. Pedicles, big old bumpy forehead, white face, saggy belly. Um, I, was, he, I knew he was a mature buck. Um, he seemed pretty old. He seemed like a five-and-a-half, six-and-a-half-year-old. I don't think this buck 
I ended up finding this one later. I'll get to it. It might be that deer, but I think uh, the deer, I don't know, for whatever reason, that one that I jumped up, I can just see having, having bigger headgear, but it very well could be this one. Anyway, he that buck watched me for a little while and then uh, took off up the ridge. I continued moving. He was with another buck. They were both bedded down in that in the same spot, and that other buck just didn't, you know, bound away when when this one did. Um, so I kept moving, and the other buck was still standing in the original spot, not too far from me. I just couldn't see him. I was all focused on the other one. And then he took off too. Um, he was a smaller body deer, a little bit younger, and but I could tell two bucks, and both were shed. So I knew there were some uh, some bones somewhere on the ground. Uh, I had to get out of there, uh, so I left. Um, followed up that ridge checked that ridge on the way out that both those deer ran up um and i got back to the main trail there's a uh, someone's tree stand was not too far from the main trail right on the other side of uh a uh, big rock wall and right in a break in the in that rock wall I, I came back up i saw the tree stand i circled around the back there's a camera there facing the tree stand i you know circled around the back side of that and was going through that opening in the rock wall when this one was just sticking up clean as day. People could have seen it on the uh, on the main trail if they just peeked peeked to the right as they're walking that main trail right in that opening. This thing was sitting right there. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, he looked so much bigger. <clears throat> it is a nice one. I measured it. I think it's if, if there was another matching side, it would have been a 130-inch deer. Um, it looked so much bigger. <laughs> Actually, it was like this. Um, it looks so much bigger going up to it, <clears throat> but really nice deer five points got a little kicker down here So that was the end of that day that day was only I was only down there for uh, I think I ended at two so it was like nine o'clock to two o'clock five hour five hour shed hunt um, three really nice sheds uh, from mature buck one match and one that uh, I still got to get back into that area and get cameras up now. It's one of the things that's just in the back of my head. Things, list of stuff I got to do. I got to get back in there, get some cameras up. Uh, I want to go down into that spot where I jumped those deer in that bedding area. Um, get a cell cam way down in there because I don't want to be going to check it. So that was a great, uh, now the momentum started happening in the shed season. The next two sheds I found um, were these bad boys here. I only had an hour this day to go out. I think I left at uh, 3 o'clock. Um, you know, it starts to get dark around 5, I think. I don't remember what time of, time of year it was. Uh, had to go get Austin. But I only had an hour to go out. I poked in. These two were laying right next to each other. And, I mean, it's just a giant, giant six-pointer. Um, so this is the third set of the year. But, uh, no, the fourth fourth set of the year. Um, second fresh set and uh, second six point set. Uh, huge, huge, really mass. Uh, got a lot of mass on him. You can tell he's an older, older deer. Um, when when I got that one, I think I had had three cups of coffee that day. Um, I crushed a whole bunch of work in the morning. I was like, I got to go reward myself. Get out for an hour. I did reward myself, but I cheered. I mean, I I let out. Uh, you know, celebration like um, like I had shot the deer, and I got really lightheaded, like actually scarily lightheaded when I found him. And um, so, I, I mean, I almost passed out in the woods. The woods started blending together. You know, everything got kind of bright for a second. So uh, I, try, I try not to celebrate like that um, the rest of the year. But this was a really awesome um, uh, match and set. Uh, buck that actually this is a buck that Isaac Young picked up the matching set the year before when I brought him into this piece he's got the year before version of this um, and so we'll have to measure that one measure this one see how how big he grew but he was a six the year before he's a six here he'll probably always be a six we'll see what happens this next year but really nice big buck so after that um, after that, okay, yeah, here we go. After that, I went, uh, there we go. I went back into that piece a few times. A lot of deer were still holding their antlers. Um, he might've been an early drop, that big six. Um, but I would see 
uh, groups of bucks bachelored up in there and they'd all be holding. So I'd go in periodically once a week, kind of check on that area. Um, and then I went in and found this one sitting real nice. He was about, it's about a hundred yards from somebody's house. You could see the, see the house, but a hundred yards sitting on, um, public land, just laying there really nice. Uh, walked up on him, was really excited about that one. This was another day that wasn't um, wasn't super long. I think I only went out for two two hours, maybe turned into three. No, I think it was two or three. Um, found him about an hour and a half in. Um, check check the same area where the, that big six was because that was a really heavy feeding area. Um, the leaves were just, you know, it was you could just see the entire ridge was torn up. So that was always the first spot I checked. I'd come in there and check that every week when I would go in. I'd go check that again. Um, so definitely repeat, you know, repeat the same spots. Uh, I'm actually kind of just noting, noticing now there's a little tiny knob kicking up down there too. We'll see what happens on that this year. But um, I went through that whole area where the six was, worked my way over towards the uh, um, kind of where it gets a little more suburban-y next to some houses. And that's where uh, that one was sticking up. So that was cool. Uh, I made a swing on the way out and was walking along right on a trail. And could see this one. Um, this one was 10 yards off of a uh, main dog hiking trail, walking trail, um, sitting up clear as day. Was excited, walked up to that, figured out then that it was a match. It was this one's match. I didn't know this deer, but um, somebody that I know does. So he showed me pictures of him. So that's that's his match. He's got a broken brow tie in there. This side's a little stunted. This one's a little better. This one's a little bit more stunted, but. Um, there's another match. So I don't even remember what that is for match sets. Um, but then as I'm sitting there kind of holding that up, taking pictures of the match, uh, I walk uh, that spot where this was sitting, even though it was right off a trail, it was torn up again as well. And it's one of those places you're walking on the trail. You can see laid down flat, matted down leaves, and then disturbance. Make sure you go check those disturbances out. Um, so that's, this one was, 10 yards off the trail in that disturbance. I worked my way through that disturbance after I found that one. And that's where this beauty was laying. Um, this is actually the one that, you know, the, the, the biggest one, I believe, in that patch of woods, even though it's actually kind of a small antler. It's weird. When you hold it in your hand, it's kind of a small antler. Compared to, you know, the mass of something like this, you, this one's a heavy older deer than this one i think this one's a young you know young deer three and a half maybe four and a half you know four and a half is probably a good bet and um but this is one that a uh, few people i knew were after i generally don't hunt in this neck of the woods it's hard to get permission over there um but i do shed hunt in the public place that you can't can't hunt i like going in there to shed hunt so Found this one, uh, couldn't believe it because it's it's a uh, you know fairly famous little deer around around that area. Um, my best shed to date by far. Super cool buck. I can't wait to see if he explodes, and I can't wait to see uh, you know him dead on the ground um, from one of my buddies because I don't think I'll be in a spot where I can actually kill him. But a beautiful deer. He's got split G three. You don't see that a lot. Splits are usually G two or your uh brow tine but um on the g3 that's super cool long broken off here this extended out to here um so a couple inches broke off there but that was awesome a three shed day within two hours um we'll put those right there and then these were all singles i think the the next shed i found was this one this is a deer that I call tripod. Me and a buddy are calling him tripod. Um, it's got a nice, nice split G2 down. I mean, uh, uh, brow tine down here. Um, he's actually a pretty young deer. I think, I think he's uh, three and a half here. Um, so next year, four and a half. It'll be nice to see what, what he does. But anytime you got some stuff like that starting on a younger deer, that's really awesome to see. And this was a... That was laying there on a little hump, just begging to be picked up. Um, so that was on a single shed day. I think I worked uh, quite a bit of ground that day. Didn't find anything until I found that one. Um, then 
This was an afternoon. Uh, I was actually on the phone with Joe Donito about Huntstock and um, conferenced in with uh, with Porter and uh, talking to Joe about getting him out to Huntstock. And um, we're having a pretty good conversation. And I told him, yeah, I'm out actually shed hunting right now, getting some exercise. And he was talking about how he can never find sheds. Um, but he doesn't get out that much, but he can't find sheds if his life depended on it. He, but he can kill deer real fast and uh, get it done efficiently on a big buck like nobody's business but we we're t- just talking about um yeah i can't really find sheds and i i was like boys you would not believe it because this has some night everything's got some nice length on this one right uh, i was like i just walked up on a beautiful shed so i got to share that moment with those dudes which was uh which was awesome and uh joe claimed that uh you know he he's got claimed to half of this shed now he's a 50 percent because he brought he brought me luck 50 percent owner so um He'll probably hold on to this one at Huntstock this year. But uh, because I didn't know the deer as well as the guys who were hunting him, I didn't really realize that it was this one's match until um, I sent it to them and they sent pictures back and it 100% is the match. So that that is exactly what I was looking for in that big, big patch of woods. Um, you know, it's not a tiny little suburban patch. This is a 1,000, 1,200-acre piece where this guy – uh roams around and found it i think it was a mile and a half away from this one so this one as you remember was down right next to a trail this one was not near any trails but it was uh probably 150 200 yards from uh a house so out in the public land again but just sitting there in that buffer zone they like to stay near the houses um i guess feed there was there wasn't a lot of acorns where this one was. I was just working the edge of that public land back near the houses. Um, but I didn't find a whole bunch of feed in that area. He just happened to, he was probably feeding in, um, in their yards and bedding there and in between the bed and feeding dropped it right there. So there's my best match ever. Super stoked to get that one. Uh, again, I think he's four and a half years old, maybe three, uh but best guess probably four and a half if i had to say and he scored about 144 inches with broken stuff like this one's broken broke a few inches off here so broke and broke on the main beam here um he could be something really special so that was cool match that one up a lot of match sets this year um again i got a little bit lucky with that um all right so then this was my best shed day. All of these are seven sheds here. I found all seven sheds in one day before one o'clock. Um, and I believe the best one of the day was the first one. Yep. And this is the one I wanted to go back in. It's in the same, you know, same area that some of these others were found. Um, but because I had kept an eye and uh, I'd, seen, I'd seen this buck a few times in there, with some other bucks but he's a nice eight pointer nice chocolate bases you know good mass on the bases um and it was just a really handsome buck and i really wanted to get uh get his antlers so this one was laying uh right next to a stump um and again in a heavy feeding area acorns but middle middle of the forest this time it wasn't uh you know on the edge near houses or wasn't near any trails this was in you know, kind of a secluded part of <clears throat> of those woods. Uh, I know the guy who found the other side of this, and he had found the other side super early, I think in January, sticking up through the snow. So I did cover a lot of ground looking for the other side, um, which was futile because uh, it had been picked up a few months before I found this one. A um, little bit of chew marks here, just a, just a little bit, but an overall really nice shed. So that was the first one on that day. Then, then it was this one, number two, funky, real funky, but it wasn't too far from that one. I found that one. I went on a little streak. I think I found this one three minutes after the big four point side. And then I found this one right, right near that one. It's not a match. It's the same, uh, same side. Found that one about a minute after that one. So it was a little, little streak there. Um, then it went a little while before finding 
something. And then I was on the phone with Pat Burns and walked across this one while Pat was on the phone with me. Um, so that's number four that day. Then I went back to the area where I found uh, this one. Remember that split G G2 and, and the match, this one that was right off the, the trail. I went back into that area because it had been, I don't know, two weeks since I'd been over there. And uh, I started scanning, going over that again. And uh, using OnX, using the tracking feature so you can see where you've walked and all that. Because um, that will come in handy if you you got that on the whole shed season you can see a spot you overlooked a little bit so even though i'd been in that area a few times and combed it there was a little spot i overlooked i walked along that um it was really hard to see the way i walked and i didn't see it that way and then i walked past it and i stopped and periodically you want to stop take your time especially in those areas where there's a lot of you know chaos and the leaves happen and take your time in there so I had uh, gone past, stopped, I was looking, just looking around. I turned around and looked back and saw saw these uh, these tines sticking up. And he's a really impressive, long start, you know, long, long, long beams, long tines, um, real skinny, spindly rack. Uh, so he might be young, and this will be cool to see what he does, but he, he could turn into something really special too. Um, but it was just cool. Walked past it, didn't see it, turned around, and it was as clear as day. Um, sometimes it's an angle thing, and it's the the way the sunlight hits, and um, so that was that was awesome. This was the fifth that day, and I guess it's debatable which one is a better antler. You know, I think this one he's heavier. This one probably they probably score the same. Um, they're both really cool. So after that. As I was getting pretty tired, probably going into 10 miles or so, I saw this one. This one is probably a year old. Um, still got some decent color to him, though. It's not like it was super chalk, but got, got some good chewage happening here. And um, picked him up number six that day. And then, I don't know, 200 yards away, this one was found. And this, to me... It's the same deer, a year apart, or just the genetics in that area. But it looks to me to be the same deer. Um, and the antlers shed very similar spots, just a year apart. But this one's the fresh one, and this one is the year before, and this one looks like the bigger one. So that's what's got me a little dumbfounded. Either he shrunk a tiny bit, or it's his brother, or I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but this is definitely fresh for this year. And this one is definitely their land. So you guys tell me what you think there in the comments. But this one looks a little bigger, doesn't it? He could be on his way down. It kind of looks like it could be an old deer going the other way. So so that was cool. That's number seven that day. That's my biggest shed day ever. Um, seven in one, one day. And then uh, <clears throat> this one is the drop. He's got a drop time starting. I got some great footage of this buck. You guys are probably seeing him on my page. Um, I snort wheezed him in on a Sunday and uh it was in a, a place that you can't hunt anyway I was just going to check a camera that I have in there to keep uh keep tabs uh on the deer and I was going to check that camera and I was surrounded by by bucks that day and this was one of them I had a really cool just playing with them because no 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 pressure no no reason I shouldn't uh try some stuff so I was you know, scraping the ground and stomping my feet and snort wheezing and got him to get in pretty close. And he's a beautiful deer. He's one that I've been watching for three years since I moved uh, in into my house. Um, he was a nice two and a half year old six pointer the first year. Just beautiful body. Um, I got some great pictures of the sun hitting him just right and a nice six point rack as a two year old. Last year he was even bigger. Beautiful deer last year. And then this past season um, was a beautiful deer at four and a half. So next year he'll be five and a half. Um, the side over here has got a lot of palmation happening and a little drop time starting in the front. So um, probably the one I have the most history with and the best chance of shooting next year uh, because um, I just see him a lot. I know where he's at and he's in a um, place I can – he leaves that spot and goes into places that I can hunt him quite frequently. So um, I'm going to try to get him. He's got some nice mass, heavy mass 
on them. Uh, but that's that's it, man. That was uh, that was the shed season. Um, after I found that one, I don't remember when that was. End of end of March, um, I got real heavy into turning on turning on the gas full steam uh, into all the hunt stock stuff. Um, so I kind of called it quits after that one. I haven't been out since. Um, starting to green up a lot now. Uh, but what I, what I did do, I realized, shit, I've been getting charged from Tacticam every month, even though I haven't had Tacticams out in the woods. Um, so I might as well at least get those Tacticams back out in the woods. So I got some minerals, I got some corn, um, and, uh, set up three cameras, three Tacticams, a couple of regular cameras. So they got five cameras out right now. Um, with mineral and corn in front of them. Um, I think <laughs> it's even a little bit late to do that. Um, but you know, better late than never. Some people have been saying, get your mineral out, um, January, you know, right after the season's over, get the mineral out. That's when they're most depleted when they can use the nutrition the most. Um, the does are pregnant. You you want them to be super nutritious during their pregnancy to give their potential bucks um, the best start and the best potential. Uh, so you know they still they're still eating mineral now, and the bucks who um, are just starting to regrow their antlers into velvet now are getting good mineral. So uh, um, we'll see. I had a plan to get. 10, 15 more cameras out, um, get more mineral out, go take down my uh, climbing stand, which is still uh, where I left it mu- on muzzle muzzleloader season. Got to drag that thing out of the woods. I still got some climbing sticks um, and platform up in a tree on a piece of private. Uh, so I got to get, I still got to do a whole bunch of stuff. I got to get out of the woods. Now we got 80 degree days. We got ticks everywhere. We got green starting to come up. So it's late. It's too late, but I gotta. I still gotta go do that. So, um, if you're listening, you're wondering what you should be doing now. Just go get uh, some mineral rocks, get some trophy rock, go to uh, uh, Tractor Supply, get some cattle mineral, whatever you can find. Um, get a little pile going somewhere, uh, and um, get them coming to that and getting their racks starting. Um, I still don't know. I mean. People I talk to swear by it and say that, you know, you can get them an extra 10 inches of antler um, if they're on mineral all summer. So we'll see what happens. Uh, last year I didn't do it. The year before I did quite a bit. Last year I think I only had one one out because um, I slacked a lot last year. But uh, start to identify the summer ranges, get some cameras out, have some fun, um, keep shooting, get your bows tuned, getting, uh, you know, 3D, 3D archery season. Total Archery Challenge in Vermont a couple weeks from, from now. Uh, I'll be up there. Actually, when this comes out, it might be the week after this is out. Um, but if you're going to Total Archery Challenge, say hello to me. Pat Burns will be up there. Uh, I th- believe the the guys from Northwoods Whitetails are going to come hang out with us a little bit. I think Lanny's going to come hang out with us. We're going to do an after party uh, up there. So that's in uh, Pico. Uh, on Pico Mountain in Killington, Vermont. We're going to have an after party. I'll announce that on Instagram before uh, we go. And just we'll be talking to people about it at Total Archery Challenge. So that's going to be fun. Um, after party will be up on the mountain somewhere uh, doing free beers for the first, uh, buying the uh, first 50 people a beer. Darn Tough's going to give away a pair of socks uh, to the first 50 people to that after party. So should be a good time. Um also, you're going to get really good deals on tickets at, at uh, Total Archery Challenge to Huntstock. So I think it'll be the only discounted ticket that you can get before Huntstock will be at Total Archery Challenge. Um, and you can pre-register for the Air Force Archery Games. Uh, as long as that contract comes in before then, we'll pre-register people um, for that. Uh, so you can shoot that at Huntstock. We're going to have a big prize purse. It's going to be $5,600 going out to top three uh finishers in the air force archery games uh in the compound division and the traditional division so combined 5600 i think it's 2500 for first place and compound 800 dollars for first place in traditional and then it's gonna step down uh second and third place we'll get less than that um but good good prize money um so for to do something super fun 
That's not going to cost you anything. It's free to enter, um, but it's going to be the national championships of the U.S. Air Force Archery Games. Uh, you're going to have to shoot your qualifying round on Friday or Saturday of hunt stock. So, um, you either shoot Friday or Saturday, you get one chance at a qualifying round, the top 16 qualifiers after Friday and Saturday, the top 16 on the board will advance to the championship tournament on Sunday, uh, and compete for the prizes in a single elimination, uh, head to head tournament four rounds uh if you go to the championship you will shoot four times so it's pretty exciting we're really excited about it uh hopefully uh we'll make that announcement official official and if it's official before this podcast comes out we'll put a disclaimer in the the front that says by the way it's official but um air force wants to do more games with us uh it's just they're they're deciding which events and we're hoping that uh the at Huntstock this year, that's where we'll do the U.S. National Championship for 2023, and then we'll have some uh, more events in 2024. So be on the lookout for that. Again, everybody, thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for all your support. Come to Huntstock; it's going to be an awesome time. See us at Total Archery Challenge. Um, give us a, a follow on uh, Instagram at Huntstock Fest um, and Hunt Suburbia. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, like, comment, share with your friends. Thanks a lot for the support. See you next time. Come meet and learn from the best hunters in the Northeast this summer at Huntstock, America's reinvented hunting show. Taking place August 11th through the 13th at Wildwood Farm in Westminster, Massachusetts, you can expect three days of hunters and brands coming together to celebrate hunting, meeting and learning from legendary hunters, winning prizes from our over $30,000 worth of giveaways, featuring more than seven guns, by the way, bows, arrows, tree stands, saddles, camo apparel, grills, optics, and much more, and having the best time that you've ever had at a hunting show, guaranteed. All ticket purchases to Huntstock come with a door prize entry uh, to win some of those awesome door prize giveaways, which we'll draw at the end of each day. Kids under 12 are free. It's a family event, so bring your kids. Uh, For adults, it's $40 per day, or you can get a three-day pass for $80, or you can get a three-day super pass for $150, which will get you entry all three days, unlimited 3D archery, and double the door prize entries. For trackers and fans of the Benoit family, we're happy to announce that Woodman Arms has partnered with the Benoits to reproduce their legendary DVD series, which will be available for the first time at Huntstock this summer. They are likely to sell out, so make sure you get your tickets to Huntstock so you can get your hands on those DVDs before they're gone. If they don't sell out, they'll be available online at woodmanarms.com. With hunters from all generations at Huntstock, like Lanny Benoit, Hal Blood, Jim Massett, Joe Donito, Rodney Elmer, and John Altman, all the way down to younger killers like John Lewis, Brett Joy, Neil Pendleton, Jake Bennett, Joey Davis, Isaac Young, Pat Burns, and hunting groups like Big Woods Bucks, Just Hunt Club, Mountain Deer, ADK Trackers, Northwoods Whitetails, Hunting Me, Hunt Suburbia, Stagger, and more, there's not a better show in the world to meet and learn from hunters of all age groups. And with a 3D archery course designed to give you real life hunting scenarios, 50 plus hours of simultaneous seminars and live podcast programming on multiple stages, an outdoor classroom where you can learn from legends in an intimate setting, immersive experiences like following a blood tracking dog as he tracks down a deer or learning how to butcher a deer or getting up into a tree saddle for the first time and trying out different types of stands over 80 plus sponsors from the hunting world displaying and selling their new gear and top brands that the northeast has not seen around in a long time like vortex kuyu mossberg sig sour ruger darn tough vermont delta mckenzie hoyt easton and more you do not want to miss this show you can get your tickets at www.huntstockevents.com today or you can get them at the door if we don't sell out So this summer, we'll see you at Huntstock.